Hey guys, Janice Vaughn, letting your light shine. Welcome to episode 40. You guys, I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you all so much. You guys have been amazing. I, I'm i so happy to hear that um, my story is helping so many of you recognize and plan your escape. I mean, the private messages that I'm getting and the emails are just incredible. And this is exactly why I decided to start this channel so that I can help others. Because when you're going through it, you truly don't know what's going on. It, it, you're, you're just in your own bubble of craziness that you don't understand if you're sane or insane because the narcissist makes you feel that way. You guys are not insane, okay? You're not, you're not, you're not insane. Um, you're not um, who they say you are. You are not the names they call to you. You are none of that, okay? You are an amazing person. You are wonderful, you are beautiful, you are fantastic, you are amazing, you are gorgeous, you are strong. I can go on and on and on, and I, I, I promise you I will have um, some I am affirmations that you guys can all focus on. It took me a long time to realize that I was in the crazy one, okay? I, and I don't want you guys to think for a minute that you guys are because you're not. You're not. This is part of the game that the narcissist plays in the cycle that will continue to make you question your own reality. You're not, you're not crazy. You're not, you're not losing your mind. You're not insecure. Well, you might be insecure. I was insecure, okay? Um, because I lost my self-worth. I didn't lose it all, okay? He didn't take it all from me. Um, I have built it back up and it took me a year to do it. But you know what? Here I am shining my light to help you guys. And in a year from now, you guys are gonna be able to tell your story and shine your light to help other people. So it, it, it's like, it's, it's a movement that we have to help one another so that we can share this because as life goes on and more chaos happens in our world today, more people are going to be subject to um, the mental illness of narcissistic abuse. It's, it's becoming so crazy how many people are are, are really just, not healthy in their mind and they make us believe that we're the crazy ones but we're not so just keep keep your little bubble like i keep telling you guys keep your bubble of safety and and faith and um know that you are you are not crazy and you're not who they say you are okay own your truth speak your truth all right so you guys here we go so this is the um this is the the day of the order protection hearing that I touched on in episode 39 and I indicated that um, there, there was an apple tracker. Oh yes, there was. All right. So my, my best friend, Nick, which I keep talking about and you guys are going to meet him. Oh, wait till you meet him. He's amazing. So he had a plan. He had a plan the night before, actually it was two nights before the order protection hearing. And he goes, Janice, he goes, the car the narcissist is driving is that in your name or his name? And I went, oh, it's in my name because, you know, he didn't have a job. He couldn't finance anything. So everything was in my name. And I said, no, it's in my name, solely in my name, not even his, um, because it was purchased prior to the marriage. So it was really my sole and separate property anyway. And he goes, all right, here's what we're going to do. He goes, you know what? This SOB wants to collect $1,500 a month for spousal support. Yes, he did. He wanted to get me to pay him. $1,500 a month for spousal maintenance. You don't meet those qualifications, dude. Seriously, I we weren't even married barely over three years. And, and you want that? When you were making $200,000 a year? Are you kidding me? So again, it was a job. It's a job, 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 job. And I thought, you know what? He is not going to collect that because he doesn't qualify. So I wasn't worried about it. I wasn't. But because he's a narcissist, he wanted to go to trial and he didn't want to be amicable. Well, we couldn't talk because there's a pending order of protection still is in place to this day. Thank goodness. And so I knew that he was going to, I knew that he was going to tell the judge that he couldn't get a job and he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that. And I said, you know what, Nick, you and I both know that he goes to the casino every freaking day. So Nick says to me, he goes, you know what? Girl, get yourself an Apple tracker. I said, what the hell is an Apple tracker? Like, I, I don't know these things. He goes, just get on Amazon. And, and so we're on Amazon. And he goes, have it delivered by tomorrow morning. And I said, okay. So 
I get on there, order this Apple tracker, not even knowing what the hell it was, right? Because it was kind of new. So it comes in and I remember he came to my house and right as he was getting ready to leave, I got the email that my Amazon package was delivered. And I said, dude, stop, wait, I got it, I got it, I got it. And this, it came the night before the order protection hearing. So I've got my posse with me again, all right, my, my, my vibe tribe. So the girls and I go into the hearing and while we're in the hearing, Nick is sitting outside in the parking lot of the courthouse and um, waiting for the narcissist to go in, which he did. And he plopped that Apple tracker on my car, not the narcissist car, my car. So I knew that I was not doing anything illegal and uh, I would never have done that if it, if it was not my car, obviously, but it was my car. I wanted to know where my car was because at this point he was so, he was so off the wall that I didn't know if he was going to take my car um, out of state. I didn't know if he was going to ditch it somewhere. I didn't know if he was going to abandon it somewhere. So I was like, you know, I need to know where my car is. So Nick's like, all right, you guys go into the court hearing and I'm going to put this damn Apple tracker on his car, which he did. Oh gosh, he did. He did. He did. So I told Nick, I said, one, here's the deal. If you're going to do that, I don't want to know where this man is. Okay. I don't, I don't want to know where he is. So you track him on your phone. I don't want to put it on my phone. I'm trying to get away from this man. I don't care where he is. I don't care what he's doing, whatever. And Nick goes, all right, we're going to do that. But you know what, Janice? There's one reason. There's one reason that I want that tracker on the car. And I go, what's that? He goes, because I want to make sure that he is not driving by your home. I want to make sure that he is not stalking you. I want to make sure that he is not following you. He goes, I need to know where he is because nobody trusts him. He is dangerous. So that's why primarily why he did it. But we also knew that he was going to frequent the casino, which was going to be my proof to the court to say, why does this man need $1,500 a month in spousal support? Because guess what? He goes to the casino every day. So there we go. Proof. Wasn't proof. I wasn't tracking him. I wasn't stalking him. Um, really didn't care what he was doing. But yeah, there were times that he did drive by my house an awful lot. And uh, Nick had it on his phone and he tracked it and he made sure I was safe. And um, he told me that um, if he saw that he was sticking around the neighborhood or whatever, uh, he would be right over to make sure that I was safe. And um, oh yeah, th this guy, you guys... I can't tell you how many homes he went to. So that tells me that he was preying on women. Okay. Several of them have reached out to me in private message. So several homes around the neighborhood or he parked the car. There was one time he was uh, sleeping in the parking garage at uh, near the Chandler uh, Municipal Court and Library. So make a long story short, this is a list of all of the times that he frequented in the casino. Okay. Um, front and back, front and back. So he would go literally every single day, if not every other day he was there. Um, tells exactly the time that he was there and <laughs> nicknamed it the penis wrinkle. I know. I don't, don't ask. I, I didn't do it. He did. Nick's crazy. But, uh, so yeah, casino Scottsdale casino, Arizona. Okay. Gila river. Casino, which is Lone Butte or Wild Horse. All of these were submitted to the court as exhibits. And uh, sometimes he was there multiple times a day. So tell me why. Then he changed his name to Little Cock. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, I'm telling you, my friend's crazy. But I have the best friends on the planet. I keep saying that. Why would any person need to collect spousal support? from somebody they were married to for a short amount of time, but they were at the casino almost every day. Why? Why? Why, why would you need that? Um, manipulation, control. Um, I don't want to step up and, you know, get a job and support myself. Well, guess what? Found out that on some of these, um, he did find a job 
probably not pay, it probably doesn't pay very well. Actually, I know it doesn't pay very well, but it's funny how for six years, the man didn't have a job, wouldn't get a job, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. He was, he was supporting my business and he was promoting my business and he was doing this and he was doing that. So when I said throughout the marriage and I went through all the emails about all the times I said, listen, you need a job. You need to get a job. You need to freaking get out of this house and work. Why could he not do it um, during the marriage? But the second he was kicked out of the home, he had no choice. He got a job. He got a job. He got a job. He was using me. He was totally using me. He was financially abusing me. He was manipulating me. He was controlling me. So all of this crap that he was doing is just more confirmation for me that it was complete financial abuse. And he will sit there today, and I'm sure he's watching because he watches everything I do. Um, he's gonna say, oh, I didn't financially, really dude, seriously. You can't get a job for six years. The second you're kicked out and you have no other options, you get a job. You should have thought about it. You should have got a job. You should have treated me nicely, but you didn't. You didn't, okay? These are your choices, not mine, not mine. You had the world. You had somebody that adored the shit out of you, okay, and loved you through your faults, but you pissed it away. You did it. I didn't. You did. So um, remember that. When the narcissist is going to tell you that they can't do this and they can't do that, they can. They just don't want to. So they're not putting you um, first or um, as a priority as a priority in your relationship. They're so damn selfish. They don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. So don't worry about taking care of other people. Take care of yourself. And um, yeah, so that's that story. And <laughs> then he found the tracker. It was like uh, three months later. And uh, it was at a CVS parking lot up the street where I lived. And uh, I was able to talk to the manager of CVS because I'm like, hey, dude, I noticed that, uh, you know, there was some activity here last night at three o'clock in the morning. And you know, we got the footage and he was, the, he was the kindest manager. He was so cool. He's like, yeah, it looks like the police showed up. So he, here's what he did. <laughs> he reported me to the police department and said I was stalking him. Well, guess what? The detective called me and I said, I was waiting for your call. She was, she was amazing. And I said, uh, before I let you waste too much of your time, I'm going to let you know. The narcissist, uh, is trying to claim that I'm stalking him. I'm not. It's my car. It's in my name. I have every right to have an Apple tracker on my vehicle. She goes, absolutely you do. And she said, uh, I go, by the way, there's an order of protection in place. And um, he was he was stalking me and driving by my home. So we were trying to keep my, you know, keep myself safe. And my friends were looking out for me. She goes, you know what? Good for you. And she goes, well, I'm going to make that phone call to uh, the narcissist. And he's not going to be very happy. And I said, no, he's not. He's not going to be happy. So, uh. There was no case. I knew it. I wouldn't have done it. I don't do stuff that's illegal. I mean, give me a break. So anyway, it was uh, kind of funny because he was trying to report me as being a stalker of my own car. So there you go. Narcissist is trying to twist the shit again, as they do. So there's that story. All right. I'll pick back up here after a bit and uh, finish finish more of this crazy ride that I was on and how my escape um, continued. Okay. Gets better guys. Stay strong. Just know that. And like I said, all these things that are going on or have gone on, um, it's just, I look back now and I'm just like, wow, so nuts. You are not crazy. You're amazing. Remember that. Okay. We are all amazing and surviving narcissistic abuse is our superpower. All right. So get the hell out as soon as you can. All right, guys, love and light to all of you. Thank you for watching. You're amazing. Appreciate all of you so much.